but he's got dementia. We just wonder how much longer he's got left. I've had my life. Yours matters. You've got to fight while you're young. Don't get scared, you're growing old. Why would I? It's a privilege denied to many. Hello, I'm here with the star of new movie Remember Us, Rob Trend. Remember Us is a brand new British drama about dementia and it stars the brilliant Rob Trend, who joins me now. Uh, Rob, it's great to meet you. First of all, you don't look nothing like your character today. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> it's a worry, it was. Yeah, you left the flat cap at home. <clears throat> yeah. Rob, let's talk a bit about your character and the themes of the movie. Well, the character basically is someone who's suffering from dementia and the progression of this disease throughout the film. Um, and at times you think he's probably not aware of it, but there you start to see the changes in the character's attitude and conversation and, and the way he's looking at people and events in there. Um, and, and generally it's, it's one of those things that with the, with the other side of it, which is the, the prejudice side that comes through, the, the character himself, you first think, is a miserable git, you know? And everyone says, that's right, Rob, you didn't have to do anything, did you, really? You could just, uh, just be you. <laughs> but, you know, you can see it. That, that then it, you start to see he softens slightly. And, and the movie itself, it, it's filmed in a way to me, is that it could be almost, the subject could be a documentary. But the way it's filmed, it isn't anything like that. It's, 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 it's drama and it's bringing in so many elements of things that we see day in, day out and possibly not even know that you're looking at some form of prejudice. It's, you know, it could be just a comment that sparks off so much, you know, so many problems. I can confirm I've, I've met Rob and he's not a miserable git. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so it's a film about dementia, but as you've, as you've told me, as you've explained, it, it's it's more it's a character study about a guy who's, who's who's deteriorating and losing his memory and getting confused, and I think we can sometimes society can be a little bit uh, lack patience when it comes to dealing with anybody who's going through something, uh, who's changing, who's you know who's who's, mm -hmm. who's 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 kind of moving into a different state of being, and I think you, you can tell me whether the film is about trying to trying to understand, trying to empathise and maybe learn about how we can interact with people who might be going through a similar thing. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, because I think you've got to, you go through the stage, hopefully, of seeing the character was the, 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 the first impression you get is, whoa, you know, this, this is not, this name's not nice. But then you start to understand that, you know, he's a widower, he's on his own. So any changes that are going on are possibly n not understood totally by, by, by the character, by Mr. Miller, um, because he doesn't understand it. You know, he may do things and he's confused, but it won't necessarily show confusion because he's not quite sure what the real Mr. Miller is and what he isn't because he lives on his own. And it's suddenly when this, this young man comes into his life delivering food, his initial response is, is almost defensive, but aggressive. And possibly that's how he's led his life, because certain things you won't understand, and it gets quite scary to think that sometimes you're confused, but you can't, you can't talk to anybody about it, because it will sound odd. Yeah. How did you prepare um, to play a man who had dementia? Um, I suppose I, I, I went back to my family, who my mother um, showed early signs of it and, and luckily she didn't go through a whole long term. But I can remember, you know, going to see her and being welcomed, hi, hi. And then through the conversation, I suddenly realised she's not talking to me. She didn't know I was her son. And she told me to go and see my mother because she might be worried about me. And then... I found that very confusing on how to handle that. And, and I can see how people find it difficult to handle any kind of mental problem. And that they've changed, that their whole personality has changed, but they go in and out. Yeah. And that's what I hope to portray there, that I go in and out. You think, is, is, he, is, this, a, is this a moment when he's him or is a moment when he's somewhere else? Yeah. Um, and it's just research as far as I could do 
Uh, but taking it really going back to my my own experiences of, of, of family. The UK film industry has a rich history with social realism with like uh, Ken Loach and Mike Lee and, uh, and directors like that. Uh, and, and now we have Remember Us. And do you hope that it has that realistic, earthy British quality, uh, obviously feeling contemporary as well, but hopefully it follows in the tradition of the kind of films that we used to make really well? Yeah, I, and I, I think it, it will, it will cross boundaries on this one as well. I mean, it, I think the development of this, how it's been, how you see it roll along, you start to say, yeah, I want it to be real. I want it to be gritty, which it is. Um, but each, there's, there's all sorts of different things come into it. You're not just going along this, this old man who's a miserable son, so going through this, going through, de deteriorating to the end. Suddenly there's, a, there's all storylines going on around it. And they're all being fed into it. So suddenly you start to see the connection all the way through. Um, and, it, and, it, and the finality of it at the end, you can see where everything suddenly comes together. And so, yeah, I hope it is because, and I think it will be because we all felt the characters. We all felt the same things about, about the, the subject. And I think everybody, every actor and all the crew that came into this had a, had a passion about the, the subject of dementia or, and, and that kind of thing. So yeah, um, I think it will do. So you star alongside two brilliant young supporting actors. Uh, you're a little bit older than them, Rob. So obviously you're as the, the wise sage, the veteran on set. <laughs> well, so I will be very careful with my wording now. Did you give them any advice? Was there a nice, uh, did you sit down and say, hey kids, look, it's a tough business, this business, you know, you've got to have a thick skin. <laughs> or do, I, I, Knowing you, the, the tiny, tiny, you know, the little spell of time I've had with you, I can't imagine you sitting, telling them, look, you know, this, these are the pitfalls, but was there, was, there, was there any of that, you know, were you the, uh, the wise sage? No, 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 I guess time to keep the noise down, you know, <laughs> while I was sleeping and things like that, and get off those phones for God's sake. Yeah, but, <laughs> but no, really, they, they are amazing. You know, Faisal and Emma were really amazing. And they took their characters so seriously. I mean, but, but they gave input. I mean, I, you know, I went out there and did what I did, but they wanted to put input into it to say, look, do you think this is right? You know, they say, Rob, do you think, maybe look, if I went this way like this, do you think that would work? And I, yeah, let's, you know, fine, let's, let's, let's try it. And Caitlin was willing for us to do that. Um, so it wasn't a matter of just going out there delivering lines um, and trying to be the one, they really all worked together and they were really, really good. You know, and, I, and Faisal, I'm not quite sure, but I don't think he's had any formal training. Um, Emma has, and you know, you can tell in certain things that she's, she's disciplined in what she did, but they were so natural, you know, it, it, and it, it made me up my game. You know, but I, you know, to tell them anything, no. No, they just say, Rob, do you want to sit down? Or just, no, I'm not. <laughs> yeah. Not yeah. the character like this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh. I, guess, I can still stand up here at a moment. But yeah. they, they were very caring, you know, and, and everyone on set was really, they cared about each other. I've always wondered that, I've heard this in the past when you hear someone say, um, they describe another actor as being generous. And I thought, that doesn't make any sense to me. I thought I was quite pretentious. Mm. And then what I realised is, a generous actor is somebody who's giving you something to react off, right? Mm -hmm. So they're, they're not just phoning it in, they're constantly really drilling down into the character so you have something to bounce off. Is that, is that a kind of fair assessment? Yeah, it is, it is. And I mean, you know, we do a number of takes, as you know, but in each one, you start to progress. You start to feel that from, from the other actors. Um, and so when we were, we were in certain scenes, they were quite emotional. And even just looking, you know, I've looked at Emma, for instance, at, the, at a particular scene, I could feel the emotion that, you know, she was caring about her grandfather. And then I could see that he, he, he wasn't understanding at one point, what, what, you know, he couldn't quite understand. But you could feel the energy coming off and, and you, could, you could react to it. So suddenly you were that character, you were in that situation and it wasn't being controlled by anybody in particular, but the whole group was really working. And I learned a lot from them. 
Well, look, um, I've seen I've seen bits of it, and it looks moving and funny, and and uh, you know, and your your performance does look really impressive. You know, because it's a tough thing to pull off because you don't want to fall into you know a, a, any drama where you're playing somebody that has any disease. There are cliches to avoid, aren't there? Mm -hmm. And there are th and there's a nuance that you have to strike because you don't just want to go wildly from one thing to the other. Tell me briefly how you sort of avoided doing any kind of very soapy kind of cliches and how you made it a little bit more more detailed, more nuanced. I suppose, you know, firstly, the script was really good. So if you followed the script in your head where it was supposed to be, where the vision that I thought that Caitlin, the director, would want it to be and writer, that, that gave you the direction. You know, because you could see what this character was doing. And as you went through it, you, you, you suddenly felt that you would react as you would do. You know, so a lot of the time, I, you know, I, I know what's going on. But other times I drift off. But I didn't want it to be so sort of wandering around a room thinking, hello, who am I? What, what, who are you? You know, and I know that happens, but we didn't really want to go, I didn't want to go too far down that. I wanted to show that sometimes it's almost an invisible line that wanders in and wanders out. And, and the aggression isn't necessary aggression, it's frustration, but it comes over aggressive. And this, you know, generally, uh, as you see the, the character mellow a little because he starts to understand he's actually giving something to somebody. And then he will snap about something simple. That's when I think hopefully people will understand that that's how, that's how it works. You drift in and out and at times you're in reality. Well, nobody will be drifting in and out of the film when they see it. I'm sure they'll be gripped from the very first minute. And just finally, what's your, in, in between takes, you know, when they're setting up the lights and you know there's a bit of a wait, what's your favorite thing to do to pass the time? <laughs> Crossword, bit of knitting, uh, sleeping, yeah. you know, napping's always a great way to pass the time. It is, yeah, yeah. What do you like, what, what's your, what, what, would, what would I find if I wandered on set in between takes, what would I find Rob doing? Learning my lines. <laughs> <laughs> it's that close sometimes, <laughs> believe me. <laughs> Because <laughs> it goes in and goes out. So that's the, probably an early sign. But <laughs> like me there saying, that's what I've got to know. I want to know where I'm going to go from this. And that's it. I'm normally quiet somewhere. It's a fabulous movie. Good luck with your brand new movie, Remember Us. Can't wait to see it. Thank you, Jane. I've had my life. Yours matters. You've got to fight while you're young. Don't get scared of growing old. Why would I? It's a privilege denied to many. <laughs> You didn't grow up in a modern society where everyone expects you to be something you're not. You're meant to be my niece. You're meant to have my back. Where you are, where you're from, I don't let anyone see your fault.